Hey guys, welcome to another H Bright video. And I've officially decided on what I am going to do with my channel. Alright, so I am going to be posting three videos every weekend. The first one is going to be a uh, family things, retarded stuff I record with my brothers or anybody during the week. The second one is going to be me reacting to a YouTube video video and then the third one is going to be with me and my brother ryan playing whatever uh you can go to my discord server and there is a game suggestions text chat that and i read that so you can suggest to me a game and i might play it so today is Saturday, the 4th of July, and my stepdad, Chris, he actually bought a lot of fireworks, so we're going to be lighting them up in our backyard. I might uh, record some fireworks and post it on Family Things uh, next Friday, but uh, fireworks don't actually record well on uh camera because for some reason uh a camera doesn't get details well so it just looks like a giant black mudge with just fireworks going off so yeah today we're gonna be uh reacting to another Minecraft video by MatPat, aka Game Theory, and it is the third one. I know we skipped one, but that one is really old. Like, in the, let's say, first two years of Game Theory, so I skipped it. We will probably uh, get to that later. Here, I'll even do that next Saturday. I'll do the Creeper video. But today we're going to be reacting to, and the title is, The Truth About Minecraft's World. And, yes, the video will start out with a joke. And I'm going to give a mini spoiler warning. There is some, uh... I don't want to say inappropriate, but in the beginning of the video, there is some uh, PG-13 kind of stuff. So if you are young, like maybe six, seven years old, I would back out now. Here, I'll even repeat that. If you are six, seven, or younger... Back out of this video now. And with that, let us begin. Oh great, my Facebook feed is filled with crazy conspiracies again. Yeah, Dan, I'm sure the CIA is super concerned about you identifying as a waterbender. Why, of course the Illuminati were behind the Harambe shooting. It's a mass conspiracy to get everyone's dicks out. Oh, and big surprise, the craziest of all people who still believe that the planet is flat. Oh, Sorry, I should have read the whole article first. It says that Minecraft takes place on a flat, cuboidal planet. Huh. I wonder. Seriously, more dicks for Harambe! Oh, so this is what I was talking about. If you are a young child, six to seven, get out of this video now. Brought the world together, terrorist attacks and civil wars have just as frequently. 
subsequently tore us apart. But while most of the rest of the world was worrying about the spread of the Zika virus or the economic ramifications of the Brexit, there was... Or, in this case, in 2020, the worries of the COVID-19. Why did people name it that? What's with the 19? I never understood that. Why? Is 19 some sort of code for virus? I have no idea. Here, let's just continue. One other huge issue that reared its ugly head online. An issue that many thought was long eradicated at this point, but still somehow got itself plenty of attention. Much like the resurgence of measles, old diseases come back stronger than ever. And in this case, the issue in question was whether the Earth is flat. Seriously. The top of this year saw bunches of social posts as D-list celebrities once again questioned centuries worth of scientific teaching and probably their own experiences on flights. Photos from space? Bah! That curvature I see is obviously photoshopped. See that curved horizon? It's a classic Illuminati mind trick. And yet no matter how many times you leave a well-substantiated, scientifically backed claim in the thread, nothing you can do will ever get them to think any differently. <sighs> Man, people are just stubborn sometimes. Now, for as dumb as this whole thing was, it did get me thinking. Minecraft is a beautiful game that is basically home to millions of living, breathing worlds. And yet, whenever I see those worlds depicted, they're always shown to be giant cubes floating in space. Globes that have been smushed down and turned into glorified Rubik's cubes. And when you think about it, that would seem to make sense. Every person and thing in the Minecraft verse is made out of blocks. Pig, blocks. Tree, blocks. Box, blocks. And whenever you look up, you see a square moon and a square sun. So clearly the planet Minecraft should be set in a world shaped like a rectangular prism. No, no, actually. Because, well, logically it might make the most sense for Minecraft to take place on a Picasso-esque cubist world. That simply isn't the case when you look at the science. In fact, what the science has to say about the Minecraft world is simultaneously surprising and incredibly fitting for a game as beautiful and rich as this one. So let's solve some mysteries about the Minecraft world the good old-fashioned way by science in the heck out of them. So how can I prove that Minecraft's world looks like this and not? Before you get to the rest of this video, and I know that I put my videos as not for kids because I react to, uh, to some stuff. Like earlier in the first part of the video, the, uh, joke. So, before you get to the rest, put your answer in the comments. What do you think Minecraft's world is? Do you think it's square? Or do you think it's round? I actually believe MatPat because... I believe M MatPat... I think the Minecraft world is round because I've seen this video before and I know what he gives as evidence. So I believe MatPat, I think it's round. And I think his suggestion will change you cube thinkers. This. Well, forget all those complicated pixel measurements and calculations. It's literally as easy as doing this. Seriously, all you have to do is jump. It's as easy as falling over, and that's no exaggeration. You see, gravity is a force that attracts any two objects with mass. You, as an object with mass, have a gravitational pull. Granted, it's a teeny tiny one, but remember, size doesn't matter. It's what you do with it. And besides, I'm not gonna judge. I'm attracted to you nonetheless. In a strictly gravitational way, that is. Hey -o! <laughs> How am I not doomed to be single for the rest of my life? Now, in the case of a human walking around on Earth, the planet is so massive relative to you, all you feel is the gravitational pull into the ground. But it's not just pulling you down, it's pulling you into the center of the Earth. Now, the strength of the force of gravity is proportional to the planetary body's mass and inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the center of the body. Don't worry about it, that was just a bunch of gobbledygook so I could throw the equation up on the screen. Instead if you skipped my, uh, young age warning, 
I hope you're ready for some math and science. Just look up on the screen right now. It's math. So if you skipped my age warning, seven, no, six, seven, and lower. I hope you're ready for some math and science and maybe a bit of history. And let me simplify it for you. If you're on a sphere, like you are on Earth, where every point is basically the same distance from the center of the globe, gravity all around the Earth is consistent at 9.81 meters per second squared. However, if your planet was in the shape of, uh, I don't know, say, a cube, like most people assume Minecraft's planet is, the pull of gravity would actually lessen as you got closer to the edge of the planet because you're getting further and further away from the core. Let me show you what I mean with some really quick math. So before Beta 1.8, there existed the Far Lands, signifying the end of the Minecraft world. They were about 12.5 million blocks, or in real-world measurements, meters away from the center of your world. If you calculate out the distance to the core of the Minecraft Earth from the middle of the cube versus the edge of the cube, the edges of the cube are about 5 million meters further away, or over 3,000 miles. To put that into context, if you were 3,000 miles further away from Earth's core right now, you would be well above most astronauts when they fly, which is about 200 to 400 miles up. You'd also be past most satellites, which are up about 3,000 miles from the surface of Earth. The only thing still left above you would be GPS satellites that are about 6,000 miles up. So now, based on that earlier gobbledygook formula I threw up on the screen, we can actually calculate that gravity Gravity at the edges of the Minecraft world would be about half the strength that it would be from where you first spawned because you're so much further away from the center of the planet. At the corner farlands, it would actually be even less because it's the furthest point from the planet's core. Because of this, in the farlands, Minecraft Steve would be able to jump incredibly high and fall much slower, both of which, though, don't happen in the game, meaning that gravity isn't changing based on where we are in the Minecraft world. The only way that this would be possible is if you're basically the same distance from Earth's center of gravity at all times. This just isn't possible in a cubed world, nor in a pyramid world, not even a parallelopiped world. The only shape of planet where this could possibly work is a spherical world, providing us evidence that the Minecraft world is actually round. But it's not just the force of gravity, it's also the angle of gravity. You see, the gravitational force would be pulling Minecraft Steve towards the center of the planet, the center of gravity. On a spherical world, that's always at a right angle to the ground. But on a cuboidal planet, again, because you can move so much further away from the core at different places on the surface, gravity would act on you at a different angle based on your distance. Even though Steve would be standing on flat ground, it would actually feel like he's on a slope because gravity would be acting on him at an angle rather than straight down. Remember when I said that proving Minecraft's world was round was as easy as falling down? Well, it's true. If you were to jump off of a tall tower, or since this is Minecraft, I suppose, a giant recreation of popular MMO's face made entirely out of wool and redstone, you wouldn't fall straight down towards the Earth. Instead, you would fall at a slight angle as gravity pulled you closer to the planet's center. I actually feel real bad for Minecraft Steve. If he were real, he would not only feel disoriented all the time, but he would literally just topple over sometimes because his sense of gravity would match up to what he was seeing around him. His equilibrium would be so messed up. But gravity isn't the only way that we can prove the cubes of Minecraft exist in a rounded world. There's also the behavior of the sun and the moon in the game. First, during sunrise and sunset, look into the sky. You know what? Actually, take a minute and appreciate the night sky. This game is just beautiful. The sunset, the level of detail... I agree with Matt Pat on this. Well, besides the round earth, there is... Just look at that sunset! It's very pretty. And compare it with the real life sunsets. It gives off pink, blue, yellow, purple, pink. Hold on, I said pink already. Anyway, it just gives off cool colors. And look at this game. It's basically a recreation of it. It's really pretty. I'll continue. Gorgeous.
All right, back to science. Notice how the reds of the sun form a round, almost spherical shape in the sky? Well, the colors of a sunrise and sunset come from light having to pass through more particles of atmosphere to reach your eye. When light is a gas molecule in the air, some of it gets absorbed and then scattered. Because blue light has a shorter wavelength that tends to get scattered more, hence the sky being blue during the day. This process is called Rayleigh scattering. But in the evening, with the sun so low in the sky, light actually has a longer distance to travel to reach your eye. As a result, most of the blue light is already scattered before it reaches you, leaving the longer wavelength lights of reds, oranges, and yellows as the ones that you end up seeing. And as we can see, that's largely how it works in Minecraft's world as well, except it shouldn't. Or at least it shouldn't if the planet was a cube. You see, if the planet were a cube, the gravity differential across the faces of the planet would also affect the atmosphere surrounding the planet, with the gases drawn towards the points with highest gravity, i.e. the center of each of the planet's faces. As a result, the starting spawn location of every Minecraft map would have a very thick atmosphere, and the edges would be very thin. This means that light would actually behave very differently at different points of the map. At noon, at the center of the map, because of the light having to pass through that thicker layer of atmosphere, Atmosphere, the sky would appear almost like a sunset, red and orange. All the colors of a sunset, all the convenience of it being in the middle of the day. And conversely, at the end of the day, with the light passing through the thinner atmosphere along the edges of the planet, that's when the sky would be bluer. It's practically Sorry. the reverse of what it My is phone does that sometimes. Also the reverse of what it is. Sorry for that. My phone does that sometimes. Here. I'll rewind a bit. Guy would appear almost like a sunset, red and orange. All the colors of a sunset, all the convenience of it being in the middle of the day. And conversely, at the end of the day, with the light passing through the thinner atmosphere along the edges of the planet, that's when the sky would be bluer. It's practically the reverse of what it is IRL, and also the reverse of what it is in the game. Which means, loyal theorists, that even though Minecraft's world may seem like an infinitely flat plane or a cube-shaped world, the actual scientific evidence points to it being a sphere based on the behavior of gravity and the planet's celestial bodies. But while the overall shape of Minecraft's cube-filled yet rounded world is actually similar to our own, the way it behaves definitely isn't. For one, planet Minecraft doesn't rotate like a normal planet. In fact, it doesn't move at all. And even though the ramifications of what this means just occurred to me, it shouldn't have been all that big of a surprise. I mean, think about it. I'm able to fly hundreds of thousands of meters into the air, eventually leaving the atmosphere and entering the cold, dead reaches of space, and yet, when I fall back down to the planet, I land in the exact same square that I started with. For fun, you can even dig a hole into the planet and fall from space into that one meter by one meter hole. That is how precise it is. Go ahead, hover out there in space for a couple days, then drop back down, nothing under you changes. And what that proves is that the planet isn't moving under your character. It is stationary. But then why would that be a big deal? Well, that would mean that the sky is the one that's doing the moving. You see, on Earth, we have day and night because the Earth rotates around its axis. During the day, your side of the Earth is facing the sun, and as your little point on the globe turns away from the sun, it becomes night. But as we just saw, Minecraft's planet doesn't spin or rotate at all. And yet, there are still clearly days and nights, so something has to be changing here. How is this possible? Well, if the Earth isn't moving, that means that the sky has to be the one that's rotating around us. And while this may seem far-fetched, it's an idea that's existed since the ancient Greeks. Specifically, Plato and Aristotle proposed what's known as a geocentric model of the universe, with the Earth stationary and in the middle of everything. Which, let's face it, is a much more exciting thing to find in the center of the universe than whatever that glowing thing was there in No Man's Sky. Am I right? Up top! High five me up top! Thank you. From there, the sun, moon, stars, and other planets were attached to giant crystal spheres moving at uniform speeds to create the revolution of the heavens around us, around the Earth. And so nowadays, we look at those guys and think, geez, what total narcissists thinking that they were the center of the universe. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry for pausing. I just feel like I haven't spoken. And anything cuz i have no idea what to say all right
Let's us continue. When in actuality, anyone who's played Minecraft is actually living in that exact universe. The in-game science backs it up, too. Notice how the moon and the sun are always 180 degrees apart from each other in the sky? They're rotating around the planet, which admittedly has a weird implication about the faces of the moon, but that's a whole topic for another day. Also notice how the stars are moving at the same rate as the moon. The position of the constellations relative to the moon never actually changes. If the Minecraft world was in fact the thing moving, we would see different stars in the sky different perspectives of those stars, or at the very least, the sun and the moon would move at different speeds. Something. But instead, you see everything moving completely evenly around the Earth, exactly like it's all on one big track, making it clear that everything you see in the Minecraft sky points to you being the center of it all. So are you surprised that you're literally the center of the universe in Minecraft? Honestly, it shouldn't come as that much of a shock. Think about Minecraft as a game and what it stands for. As I talked about in my analysis of the ending of Minecraft, the whole universe of this game is about the players shaping the world around that video, the end of Minecraft, was last Saturday's YouTube video. Um, I'll put it at the end of this video. That way you can watch it. And I'll even put the Minecraft playlist. That way you can see all of the videos. Around them, making the world into anything they want it to be. Giving them ultimate power. Really, this is the figurative interpretation of what it means to be the center of your own universe, to be in control of everything that happens around you in the world. This game is designed so that you feel like anything is possible, and even the smallest of details, like the fictional astronomy in the sky, backs up that feeling. You are the creator, you are the builder, and everything revolves around the choices that you make, both figuratively, and as we just saw, literally, too. But hey, that's just a theory. Two theories, actually, when you think about it. The rounded Earth and the center of the universe thing. Wow. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's just two theories. Two game theories. Thanks for watching. Introducing York Banks. No, I don't care about ads. And that is today's YouTube video. I hope you liked it. I really like game theory. And, hold on, we're not going to be moving on to they're the same, but instead we're going to go back and look what at creepers actually are. Or, you can get ahead, and I can post this playlist at the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And now, have a great 4th of July.